I'm Brad Hamblin with Cardinal Financial. I close home loans. Um, I've been at this now for 18 years. What we're gonna talk about today is you have a large sum of money and you're gonna buy a house. And let's use like an example here so that we can kind of put together some rough numbers. Now I have software that puts this in there that would be able to tell you like, hey, if you did this and did this, and it'll come up with exact dollar amounts or approximations. Now, again, I'm not a financial planner. I'm not giving you financial advice. This is just some basic concepts that I'm explaining here, and I'm not telling you what, giving you advice with your money. So um, let's give it a scenario saying you have, you were looking to buy a $400,000 house and you have um, $100,000 that's available to put down as a down payment. And that's not all the money that you have. You feel comfortable with putting $100,000 down. And you're wondering like, what do I do? Do I put the $100,000 down or do I look at something else? So one of the concepts that you could do is like with $400,000 house, the minimum down payment requirement is roughly 5%, which is 20 grand. So let's take the difference between 20 grand down versus 100 grand down. What's that gonna look like to your payment? Well, that's probably gonna increase the payment by about 400 bucks per month. Now that's using a rough estimate, same for every dollar that you borrow, or for every thousand dollars that you borrow is roughly $5 per thousand on the monthly payment on a 30 year mortgage. Now with the 30 year mortgage, you're looking at um, a payment um, for the mortgage that's gonna be approximately $400 higher doing a loan with just 20% down versus $100,000 down. And then if you look at the difference between what you have is $80,000 to potentially invest. Now, if you invested that $80,000 in a market where let's just say the average return is what the S&P 500's done over the last, um, it's coming up on 100 years, so it's about 90 years. So the average return on the S&P 500's been about 10%. So let's use 10% as an example. And if you look at, even if you were borrowing money at 4%, that's a 6% um, spread there that you're making on your money. So if you borrow the money at 4% and at the same regards, you're able to go and put that $80,000 into an investment product that yields you 10%, that means you're making an extra 6% on your money, which is a good, a good deal. Now, here's the biggest thing that I wanna illustrate for you is that if you have a, uh, an $80,000 investment that you start on day one of your mortgage, and let's say you, let's make the assumption that you kept the mortgage and you kept the investment going for 30 years. So at the end of 30 years, giving the rule of 72, if you yield 10% on a investment product with a rule of 72, it'll double every 7.2 years. That means your money would double. So if you started with $80,000, it's gonna double once in that 30 year period for seven and a half years. And then it's gonna double again for seven and a half years. That makes it even more. Then it's gonna double again for seven and a half years. And then it's gonna double again for 30, for another seven and a half years, which totals 30 years. So it's gonna double four times. Now, if I take my head and I try to do the math, it's like, boof. Now, um, it's gonna come out to be approximately 1.2, $1.3 million that that $80,000 turns into over a, t a 30 year span with a 10% um, return on your investment. So that's just using an approximation, not saying you get those returns or anything like that. All legal disclaimers down below. Um, but here's the thing that I wanted to explain to you is that if you have that concept where you take that $80,000 that you were gonna put down on your loan and it costs you $400 more per month on your monthly payment, don't think of it as costing you more than $400 on your monthly payment. Think of it as a way of investing $400 a month to get a substantial return on your investment over a 30 year period. Now, if we did the same thing where we took $400 and started an account and started building it up, it wouldn't get to 1.2 million because it wouldn't have that doubling factor going for it because you didn't start out with 80 grand. You're gonna start out with 400 bucks. So in this scenario, you end up with a much better scenario. So um, if you have a specific scenario and you would like to like, run some software numbers and we can actually say like, hey, is this, this is your exact scenario. You're gonna buy a house at this, could put this money down or that money down and invest it over here and do this. We're all doing pretend numbers here. It's just simulating and scenarios. However, it's something that you can do. If that would be a benefit to you, get with me, send me an email. And then if we need to get set up with a financial planner, you get set up with a financial planner or ask your financial planner 
what their recommendations would be with the money because they know exactly what they would do with that extra money at the beginning. So if this was value to you, shoot me an email, let me know. Um, and I look forward to helping you. Have a great day.